Oops, hello. Oops, solo on. <laughs> there we go. Uh, oops, oh, there we go again. <laughs> Hi, welcome to the Ghost Steward channel. My name is Anthony Kogan, and tonight we are joined by Gary Rudell Waters from Ghost Searches on aka Team Blue. Are you there, Gary? Can you hear me? Oh, hey, my man, how's it going? <laughs> I don't know if you're doing that. The feast, the feast. <laughs> I know that that works so good. <laughs> anyway, anyway, we're talking to Gary tonight about effectiveness of recordings. Hopefully, they don't go static. Also, uh, the sad house in County Tyrone, and also uh, credulous paranormal. If you have, want to ask Gary any questions, feel free to do so. I'll put them on this post. Also, you can go to our website www.ghostera.net. Go to the contact page, fill in the blanks. If you have a private message, just put in brackets, private message. Also, if you're affiliated with any paranormal team or tourist attraction, feel free to name the, the group or the organization and we'll give a shout out to you. We're also live coming from the Ghost Area channel. If you press the red button, you can go and watch uh, the show live away from Facebook. But also you can catch up on what's coming up in the future and also past shows later on on that page also we have a competition tonight we have a chance to go into a halloween mega draw where one of you have a chance uh, along with gary to pick out um pick out um a, a type of instrument to play to summon up the spirit of mara to pick up the type of ghost what well, wasn't seen over the summer solstice but anyway i hope everyone's feeling good uh i've got a few shout outs there uh mary nolan from back in time paranormal hi mary how are you doing sis Hope you're doing now. Hi, Colette. How are you doing? Just shared to my page. Which page? Irish Witches Unite. Yes, if you've got any teams, feel free to put them the name down and we will give a shout out to you there and everyone else can follow as well. As well. Thanks for that, Colette. I hope you're all keeping well. Uh, Joanne Breen uh, from Seekers of the Afterlife says, Hi, guys. How are you all doing this evening? Hopefully we're all doing good there. We'll see that by the end of the show there, you know. Um, so, and Sam says, Sam from some team up the north there, <laughs> go, go search his island, even in Anthony and Gary there. Hi, Sam, how are you doing? All good there? Hey, uh, Sambo. So, yes, we're going to be talking about a few subjects, effectiveness of recordings, the sand house in County Tyrone, and also uh, Credulous Paranormal. We're also probably later on in the uh the inter uh, interview that I'm going to announce where the convention is next year as well. So if you're watching this, is it's a uh, great to tune in to see where it is. And uh, so Gary, how are you keeping? I'm grand. All the better for talking to you, my man. And it's great to see you. Go. It was only a few weeks we were at the biker fest there in Killarney. There, and as the weather wasn't good, and the same as this weekend there. Um, whatever, yeah, whatever. Member of it, yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Non-alcoholic drinks can't be drunk there. <laughs> Absolutely not. No, no, not a not, not a bit of alcoholic drink crossed no. my lips. No, no, no. <laughs> is, my, is my nose is my nose getting bigger? <laughs> Wait, oh, okay, it's coming up. Oh, I got it there. <laughs> anyway, never. <no, no. laughs> so, um, so anyway, talking about equipment now, um, we're going to first talk off about equipment. What type of um, uh, recording equipment do you use to uh, join your investigations? Oh, good question. Well, I mean, we've I've been at it for such a long time now. I mean, it goes back to probably the Flintstone age, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, no, we are we're old school, aren't we? As you know, we like to use the old night vision camcorders um, with five powerful ultralights that could light up a football stadium. Um, and we also use uh, the old Olympus voice recorders, the old analog voice recorders. You know the real to real tape, tape recorders as well. We like to use them. So we like to experiment um, with those particular pieces of equipment, but we also use condenser microphones for audio recording as well through wired through um, a mixer system and also straight into the laptop as well. And so, do you, so you, you, those type of uh, do you use like data loggers, like type of like for temperatures and kind of stuff like that as well? Or um, no, I think the, the best data logger is yourself, really. You know. Um, but I mean, there's nothing wrong with using that. You can certainly use that. It's something that we've never used in the past. So maybe something we'd consider using in the future. You know yourself, 
you uh, you learn something new every day and data log which is something that we'll probably possibly look forward to using in the future and and like so like people have got these pieces of equipment and devices there but say in an investigation when you go into a location um is there any particular method or way of setting up pieces of equipment so say if i had a, a piece of sound equipment what's the best way of setting it up well, I mean, sometimes, yeah, sometimes when we go to location, we'll always look at the outside of it, first of all, like power lines, et cetera, that can cause outside contaminants when you're recording because, um, you know, like railway lines, airports, police stations, et cetera. I mean, I mean, there's so many pieces of equipment that actually can pick up these um, outside contaminants that we call it, but we always try to filter as best as we can. You know, so when we go to location, we would check the outside of the boundary first to see what, you know, at the end of the day, if, if you're, I mean, we've we done an investigation there. It was a place called the Newton Arch Town Hall and it was awful. I mean, we, uh, we thought this is great. We're going to go in here. We're going to get some amazing evidence. But when we went in about 9 p.m. at night, it was during the summertime. And uh, also we could hear was traffic in the outside. And we that was something that we learned was that always check the outside first and check the times of traffic, et cetera, because um, you know, like the Athenaeum. I think you have you been to the Athenaeum? Oh no? yeah, yeah, it's the Athenaeum. Yeah. I mean, you know yourself, you can get a lot of traffic going up and down there as well at certain times as well, which can spoil it a wee bit when you're doing audio recordings, you know. But um, so that that that's the first thing we will look at. We'll always look at the outside of the location. Um, and then when we get in, we like to have a wee quick walk around with the client or whatever that wants to show us around. We don't like to take too much of the history of it because we like to gather as much of evidence as we can for ourselves without delving into the history. But we'll always try to get the local hotspots of the, the, the place and we'll set up our, our what scientific technology around that location as well from, from top to bottom. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I suppose, as you said, like, it's, I suppose you have to look at the room and see, you know, who's above it, who's below it, who's next door. If it's near a window, a fireplace, that kind of way. If it's near any bits of equipment as well, you know. If it's a, yeah, a, I mean, yeah. yeah, I mean, we, we'll, I mean, we use. Um, it depends on you know if you're using a powerful night vision camera, um, and you're like filming down a hallway, you can get a lot of flare coming off the windows, and you might not even know that, and you could record for six hours and come back. And you'll get that flare coming into the lens and it's completely spoiled recording. So it's, sometimes it's best to, before you actually start the investigation, is to set up the equipment, to double check at everything, you're good to go, and then you're ready for that night's investigation. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Uh, it's just coming to mind. It's like saying, like, yeah, you got to walk looking down a hallway, it's just dust time, birds are flying past, you see a shadow on the recording. I suppose it's good to know what you're looking around first to see what the atmosphere is like before you start a recording there. Um, is it, uh, just got a couple more shout outs uh, hey hi Anne how you doing from Irish Panel Investigations good to see you both different kinds of Kalani spirits for you too <laughs> I know yeah different type of spirits there you know you know <laughs> it's good, and you know what Abby it's great to see so many paranormal teams from Ireland coming on here tonight I love to see that it's fantastic. Oh, it is. so big shout, big shout out to you guys and keep up the great work out you're doing as well yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's great to see everybody out and about as well. Uh, Emma Louise yeah. Potter says hello. Uh, hey, Joanne, Emma Louise. Joanne Breen from the Af uh, Af Joanne Breen from Seekers of the Afterlife. She mentioned the Afternoon and Enoscope is very interesting location to investigate. Different each time. Saturday night, you do hear outside interference. As soon as Gary said that, yeah, it's Saturday night. You know, it's usually <laughs> one of the worst nights to do an investigation. Not just in Athenaeum, it's, it's anywhere really, you know, if you're in a town like, uh, you know, like in a score day or whatever, you know, it's all something to think about. If you can do it during a week, a weekday, happy days, you're even better. You're good to go that way. You know, you, you'll get better evidence possibly as well, you know. Yeah, as well as it, yeah, it depends where you, I suppose, you, like in Killarney, if you're near the National Park during the, uh, October, it's the rotten season. Yeah. And, that, and that's not about the deer. <laughs> 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 so, all right, Joe, I have to take it that way. So, uh, but uh, uh, as now people are using uh, motion activated devices, sound and visual. Are they, are they kind of do they limit the hours now? We view it. 
I can't do. Yeah, I mean, we have a we have a we have a body camera. Um, it's what the uh, the army use for night vision technology um, and surveillance. Um, police use it. Traffic wardens use it during the daytime. But um, and they, they just work as well at nighttime as well with widescreen. It records in widescreen. That's amazing what they've done on such a small camera, which is about that size. Um, and yeah, if you wanna if you wanna do a lock off and set a like locked off piece of whatever an item down a corridor and. You just put it the motion sensor, and I would save so many hours reviewing that evidence. You know, it's a lazy way of doing it, um, but it's an effective way of doing it as well. Yes, well, I suppose, yeah, it's with any bits of equipment there, it's good to know how, how to work as well. I suppose I got a REM pod the other day and was looking at it there, and it was I, I'll probably ask you about the REM pod and some other various kinds of equipment for recording. And, um, but I uh, noticed there you have to obviously with temperature you have to leave a room settled there for ten minutes or so before it actually works and it's uh, uh, it's alters due to fluorescent lighting the tube in lighting right. any type of fluorescent lighting. Um, but is there any kind of equipment that you know yourself there for recording that has that may see people more vulnerable to making mistakes with like you know? Um, yeah. Um... I mean, when we first started off, we used started using a condenser microphone. And for those who don't know what a condenser is, it's basically an amplified microphone that would pick up a pin drop from 200 feet away. Mm -hmm. And we'd done a location up in a place called Dobbins Inn in Carrick Fergus. Um, and I think it's been on a couple of TV shows as well. And what we found was when we were doing our recording, we, uh, on playback about a week or so later, we were picking a lot of these amazing voices coming through. But um, I have a wee bit of radio amateur um, experience behind me. And uh, what we found was the condenser microphone, if you're running it down a card or like a CCTV camera, uh, the braiding and the wire from the length of cable actually works as an antennae. And so what we found was that um, there was a taxi company down three doors down from Dobbins. And we were actually picking up their microphones or we thought we'd be, we were getting all this amazing evidence through, through the other side, but it was in fact the taxi company down. So what we found was that um, when we're doing, we started using the condenser, we used a thing called RF coils where you can wrap um, the actual uh, microphone lead instead of working like an antennae which picks up outside contaminants. If you wrap it up five to seven times, it's called an RF choke and it can cut out um, it can reduce, um, like taxis, police, etc., by ninety-five percent. This is this is just through experimentation. And these are things that you learn as you go along. Yeah, I know. Yeah, so like, the, yeah, the power from dynamic might vibrates there in the coil and the sound, and then same with a loudspeaker, the opposite way there. I know. Just as yeah. mentioned, you said that. Yeah, we we had an EVP, we had a digital sound recorder recording it. it was a type of condenser mic there, and it would picking up this kind of buzzing sound all the through all through the all through the recording and we noticed that i only noticed afterwards ah jesus yes 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 a bit beforehand just above it was uh cabling from uh the security system there and it was picking up that this constant buzz there you know uh it wasn't, it wasn't, yeah it was picking up that it was around about 115 hertz so it was constant it wasn't yeah. it sound or anything it was picking up that hum there but yeah uh, I was stupid to, I didn't think at the time not to actually put the recording person reviewing, listening into the record and do an EVP call out to put them there. Was, but but that, those things you learn is, well, I learned that. <laughs> you, know, you know, it's uh, it's interesting there. But uh, can, like, say somebody who's not been on a location, not been in an investigation, and then somebody who's is still same part of the same team, can they, is it is it still the same for them to evaluate, like, sound or video cameras or sound equipment so like data like uh, or visual is it still essential for is it still practical for somebody to do that who hasn't been on the investigation experience the building yeah absolutely i mean the team is what it is it's a team you all you all you know chip in together you know and sometimes i mean i i done it from day one where I would normally sit down and go over it, but sometimes it gets a wee bit daunting and you've, you're, you've got your own private life, et cetera, things going on. And sometimes it's nice for somebody else to step in and do that. 
Um, but what we found was it's always good to teach people as well. I mean, no one is an expert in the field. People say there's experts in this field. There, there, there's not. There's no such thing as experts. Um, you, you learn as you go along and you become experienced. It's what you do. But if you, wanna, if you want another team member to start to go over evidence, et cetera, yeah, okay, I can certainly help. But, you know, with me having so years experience behind me, I will sit down and if I can help them in any way, shape or form and teach them what I've learned, then that's, that's an added bonus for them, you know, and for me as well, because I'll learn of them and they'll learn of me. But yeah, absolutely. Sometimes it can, sometimes it's good for other people to, to chip in and join and help as you go along. And sometimes um, there's things that I would miss that a team member would say, here, have you heard this? I mean, there's a perfect example. Um, we done an investigation last year in Rams Island, and I reviewed the live afterwards the next day, and I missed something. Um, and it was an important EVP that actually a lady from another paranormal team had picked up on. And right enough, when you play it back, you can actually pick up on that. So, yeah, that's the importance of getting other people to help as you go along. Absolutely, 100%. Yeah, I think I think I can remember that. And it was a very, very clear voice. It was so apparent. It was two of you there. I think you had the recording device there. It was a very clear voice there that came through. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and it was, it was. I can't remember what it was because of we listened to so many of them. But if you go back to that Rams Island, uh, Ghost Searches Island, Rams Island on our Ghost Searches Island platforms and watch it, it's it's actually probably the best bit of evidence or the whole lot and it's something that I had missed. So it just goes to show you, just no matter how experienced you are, you can miss things that other people, team members can pick out or other people that watch it as well. Yeah, I think I can, because it was like a sentence that was said. It, was in the, it wasn't masculine, it wasn't feminine. It was kind of, oh, it was like croaking, but it was clear. Yeah, that was, was clear. Uh, yeah, well, uh, to me, it sounded like a woman's voice. Um, it's here for syllables. Um, I'd have to play, I'd have to watch it again, what it said. But yeah, it was, it was interesting. And the thing about EVP, um, where when you when it comes in, it'll never come in like our voice. Mm, yes. um, it'll always come in, as you said, only like a whisper, or mm. um, it's very very faint. Mm. But you can actually, it's hard to pick up sometimes. But you know because it comes in in that whisper, and that's that's basically if you can get a voice that's very low down and you can nearly almost miss it, I would say go back. It's possibly an EVP that you've captured. True. Yeah, it's, it's always seems to be a whisper there, or maybe a shout or pain or something that distracts yeah. her. Uh, yeah. Colette says, I love to investigate the Athenaeum. I used to frequent the nightclub next door to it years ago. I know a few people that did as well. <laughs> Not myself there, but <laughs> yeah, there used to be a nightclub there. I think, yeah, it was there. Uh, uh, Joanne says, you can't beat a, you can't beat a s recorder speaker and your senses to investigate. Mm-hmm. I understand. Uh, Mary says, always, import, always important to tag your EVPs or any recording, especially when people cough or tell me one bullet. <laughs> I, mean, uh, I, I, yeah. I was with Mary last night there. We were actually at the venue for the convention there. But uh, yes, we, we were just uh, doing a bit of just chilling out, just doing the little things and people were recording their stuff. And we did have a got a bit of coy beforehand, so it was good to, to say we were tagged there. But you, you agree with that, Gary? Well, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, what what we found was we had to change our jackets because um, we were using the Olympus voice recorders, and it was actually my wife that picked up one at the time where we were capturing like these whispers. Mm -hmm. But my wife says, "No, that sounds like a jacket." So we went, "No, that's that sounds to me like a voice." She says, "No, that's that's like a jacket." So we all listened to it and then we 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 what we done is we experiment with it we had rustle our jackets and say no words and it sounded identical so we found we had to change our jackets because they were contaminating with their recordings you know so we things like that you learn as you go along oh it's, it's definitely and then there's times we don't get to record at all i remember one of the team members i said you record and she said yes she was there and we found out after she didn't record at all. So when we met, and this was only a few years ago, and now we make sure now if somebody's recording it, we asked two times for confirmation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, and you know what? I've done it as well. I've done it a few times. So, yeah, it can be easily done. <laughs> says, hi, Gary. This is Catherine. Uh, hi, Catherine. Hi, Gary, my favourite paranormal investigator. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I've got that's one. That's, that's lovely. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, Alice says, good evening all. Hi, Alice. Love to hear everyone. 
Hi, Alice from Waterford. I hope you're keeping well. Sam says, I'm so cold. Maybe that was the words that came up, was it? I'm so cold, feel my I'm so cold, Sam. You're right. That's what it said. And there was a drowning, apparently, in the river um, at Rams Island as well. Um, but, yeah, I'm so cold. That's what it was, Sam. Good good, good call out there, Kit. Pretty. I've yes. trained you well. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's interesting, yeah. It's uh, it's interesting. I like, like mentioned coldness with spirits. So like there seems to be a lot of interaction when coldness is mentioned. There, it's inter what type of atmosphere there in is is interesting. Like you know, um, yeah. So I was going to say. Um, so we've got to go move on to the next topic because uh, uh, Gary's busy there wood shopping tomorrow. So <laughs> he's it's got to be a hard win to Gary's getting in there. <laughs> It is, yeah. Tell me about it. Don't start me off with that. I see that post <laughs> during the week there. But uh, so competition time, folks. So we're going to be because it's recorded and all that. You want to be the first person to type this word. Wait, I just say hello. Hi, neighbour. Hi, Norma. How you doing? Hi, Anthony and Guy. Hope you keep it well, Norma. Neighbour across Hi, Norma. the world. Um, you can probably see me there. <laughs> but I need the first person to type this word, and you'll be in with a chance to go into a Halloween mega draw. So the word, get your, you can write this down if you want, before you type, but well, somebody else might get in front of you. You don't have to do this, Gary, you can relax. Uh, it's the word, the two words are tape cassette. So tape cassette. So T-A-P-E-C-A-S-S-E-T-T-E. -E -T -T -E. So the first person to type in tape cassette. And you're in the chance to go in for the Halloween mega draw. So we have Gary, obviously, there, who's going to be in it. So, oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. They're all coming up there. People be wondering when we're viewing the Come front. on, come on, you can do it, you can do it. Come on, Sam. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think the first person is Emma. Emma Louise Potter, you're the first one up. So you all have the chance to go into our Halloween mega draw. So just stay tuned there, Emma, for the next uh, hour. So you've got something to look forward to. <laughs> well done, Emma. You can put on mute now and then just, well, not really, can't. you got to wait for them to I'll come back to you there. Um, so um, next we're going to be talking about the San House in County Tyrone. Oh, wait, then we're just going to say another few out shouts. Uh, Sam says, your hard work uh, to, to Gary to train. Your, your hard work to train, Gary. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. Yeah. Yeah, you, I've got a good teacher. <laughs> and Suzanne, how are you doing, Suzanne? I hope you're keeping well, and I hope you're getting better there, Suzanne. I hope you're getting uh, better, and uh, I hope you're get, feeling better there. Um, get well soon, Susanna. Get well soon, Suzanne. Also, um, so we're going to talk about the Sand House, which is situation, situated in County Tyrone. Uh, can you mm -hmm. tell us there, Guy, bro, uh, what, can you tell us a bit about the building? Is it is it fast? How many rooms it has? Yeah, well, it was a reported that was built back in the 1620s, but it was actually erected in the 1670s. Um, it's been in the Staple family for over 400 years. Um, and when uh, Hazel Staples died, she in, in tur turned it over to the trust down in Cookstown. And it's been, they've took it over ever since. Um, it's everything is, is charity run. So, um, which, you know, a big building like that can be quite expensive to run. It's basically like a museum now. They have all the, the original furnishes in the place, which is very rare um, for an old building for that to have, especially with so many of the family relics still enclosed in its walls. Um, so it's, it's steeped in so much history. It's, it's, it's incredible. It really is. And for anybody that hasn't... Um, that has never heard of Lysian House, just go to our YouTube channel, type in Ghost Searches Ireland and type in Lysian House and watch our two investigations that we've done there. It was incredible. Um, but yeah, it's it's one of my favourite locations to investigate. Yeah, it looks amazing there. When it's sort of like the staircase there, I'll go back to it, that picture now in a minute there. But oh, here it yeah. is. Wow, yeah. that looks amazing. Yeah. yeah, it's a bit like the Harry Potter, you know, with the staircase there. It's very, very fun there. Yeah, it's like, where does it start and where does it end? But it looks so, like, yeah, it? it's, it's amazing there. Can you tell us there's yeah. a story, there's a legend, I don't know, or a story, or it's like, whether it's true or not, about a, a demon being put in a bottle there. Um, how much is that accurate to you? Um, yeah, I mean, 
I always get suspicious when, I mean, when demons is mentioned, you know, but apparently there was a bottle um, that was buried within its grounds. Um, and there's different stories of to where it's located as well. But the, the story that I was told was there was a priest that actually had came down to exercise his demon. And he actually got obsessed by the demon um, to the point where um, it's actually on his gravestone that he had died from, from this possession. Um, and I'd asked a couple of historians about that and they actually confirmed, yeah, uh, Sam, uh, Sam, if you can help me here. Sam does a lot of the history of the, the place, but there's somewhere up in the north where the Great Stone can be seen. So um, I would even love to see that because I'm quite skeptical on it. But um, it's believed that the demon, the bottle in the demon is buried um, behind one of the walls in the larder of the kitchen. And there was one night that we were doing a public event there. And it was Sarah at the time she was in the team. She took um, a group of people into the larder. And they were asking out, you know, if there's a demon here, can you knock two or three times on the wall? And there was silence. And then about two or three seconds later, um, a lot of commotion, excitement, where I heard apparently two or three knocks on the wall. Um, so that freaked everybody out. Now, we're not saying this is this is a demon making a sound, but it was a time enough that that made it more credible, you know. But, yeah, this is the, one of the stories of many that um, is embedded in the brickwork of uh, Lysian House. And as you said, you do public events now as well to make sure that it's maintained a place and it's you know it's, it's for its preservation now as well. It may, or, or the proceeds there. How, yeah. how are they? How do they go there? I mean, they've been go, go, going well. Be the people being interested? Yeah, I mean, yeah, we're very lucky that they sell out and they sell out pretty quickly. Um, from from when we started to do it, I mean, don't know if there was anybody else previously doing it before us. No idea, but. Yeah, I mean, it, we were told um, it, it costs over a thousand pounds a month to maintain. So anything that we can do for them, I mean, it's it's a pleasure for us to go there first of all to investigate it. But to raise money for that place, it's 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 worth it. It's worth every penny that goes back into it, you know. And it's it's such a beautiful place, it really is. And it's a place that, I mean, there's a few, there's been a few investigators that have been through its stores in the past. I don't know if there's anybody on here watching this or what, if, if, if they can confirm that as well. But it's one that draws you in. And Sam, Sam, Sam knows what I'm talking about. Um, it's just, it's just a fascinating building. It really is. And and so it, would it rank amongst what one of the, one of the outstanding places compared to the other places you've been to as well? Like you've been to a good few. Yeah, I mean, we've, I mean, we've we've done the criminal new jail in Belfast. We've done, um, the old Queen Street RUC police station in Belfast. It uh, was originally the, the hospital for the sick children. Um, and it was incredibly. I mean, it takes a lot to say for me to say a building's haunted, but I believe, um, that these buildings there were something something definitely going on in there. You know, oh, excuse me. Maybe dogger, um, but yeah, for for listen house for for me personally speaking, I've had some um, really good experiences here to say that yeah, I believe that it's it's possibly haunted by the people that formerly lived there, and that's a beautiful thing to say. Mm. Hey, that's that's nice. And did do, is it, do you plan on going back soon or? Yeah, I mean, we've, we've been doing a couple of. Um, We've done a couple of private cases there recently, um, and we've done it. The guys were out there a couple of weeks ago. They investigated um, a building up in Belfast that we had never been to before, and we're planning to go back, and hopefully I can make that one um, in the next couple of weeks. Um, but with Lysian House, yeah, we're ho hopefully going to do another event there, probably, possibly before the end of the summer. Depends how busy we are and how busy Lysian House is as well. But uh, so, yeah, anybody that wants to go there, um, just keep an eye on our uh, GSI platforms and, yeah, we'll advertise it for people that go. But I would say if you want to go, you need to book it pretty quick. It does go pretty fast.
Yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it there when you've advertised it there. Like, you know, no sooner has it gone back, says so for sale, and it goes sold out the next two minutes late. <laughs> so, you know, you have to be quick on the draw. And if you want, so if you're not, a, if you're looking to go to the Sand House or looking to even uh, check out Gary's team, go search his on. There's links on the, on the Ghost Era page to follow as well there. Um, Norma says, what? Wow, that place looks amazing. It's like mm -hmm. our house is there, Norma. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like to call it the White House of Northern Ireland. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I live in a bungalow, so I don't know. So. <laughs> uh, Suzanne from back in time says, uh, it sounds like an amazing place. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's, I mean, when you investigate a jail, um, I always like to think, well, if I was a spirit in a jail, why would I come back and haunt it? But if you if you are brought up and born in the house and you have so many special memories there, then that would be more of a place that you'd want to linger around if possible as long as you can. Um, but to have the family there from day one um, and to have so many of its possible past residents come back and visit, which we've we've possibly captured in our YouTube footage, um, it's amazing. It really is, and. There's so many people that, that the volunteers are a big shout out to them guys because they they spend so many of their spare time there as well. They've just loved the place as much as we do. It is a it's an amazing location. It really is. Uh, Mary says uh, one for the list. Yeah, Mary. Yep, a hundred percent. I mean, we have paranormal teams from up, not only in Ireland but around the world that have came to to listen house to investigate with us. Um, n n not not because of us, but because of that building. So yeah, check out the history of it. It's, it's a it's a fascinating place. Uh, Sam Sam says uh, from Ghost Searches on Church of Array in Cookstown, I think where the clergyman's grave is located. There you go. Yeah, Sam, we'll have to get up. I'll have to get up and check it out. Uh, May says, what's your favourite location to investigate? My favourite. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, I have so many favorite ones for different reasons. Um, probably, uh, good question. Probably Ross Castle down in County Meath um, because of the history of, um, of what, what happened. Basically, um, it's, it's embedded in a love story within its walls where uh, a lady called Sabina fell in love with a young man called Erwin from two different tribes so, and the, these tribes are fighting together, you know, the, the, during the war and these two people fell in love. They were very young. One was, I think, or one was 18, I think uh, she was 17 and they decided to elope one day during a storm and um, they got on the boat and went out into Loch Shelan and it was the, the night that, it was a full beautiful night but within 10, 15 minutes of being in the, in, the, in the lake going across to escape. A storm had brewed up and the boat had, had capsized and um, she was able to, to come back, swim back to shore, but Orwin had drowned in the lake. Hello. <laughs> Don't worry, that's not, that's not a ghost dog, by the way. You know, this is very real. Um, so that's, that's just the love story where she is, is supposed to haunt the place with a broken heart. And so we, um, I, I basically, like everybody many years ago that were in the interest in the paranormal, what got our interest was watching Most Haunted. And I decided to uh, take my wife down for her 40th birthday to this haunted castle. Um, <laughs> sorry. Oh, yeah. Stay there. So, um, so I took her down and uh, when we had got there, it was in the middle of winter. It was about, uh, it was early December. And... We thought we'd never done anything like this before. So we went into the castle and the manageress at the time was making us our dinner and she got up and started to pack and leave. And I said, where are you going? <laughs> she said, where are you going? <laughs> you two are the, oh, you know, you two are the only guests in the castle for the night. We went, what? <laughs> in the middle of nowhere, probably about nine o'clock, we weren't decided to get in the car and drive back home, four hour drive back home. So we stayed the night. And uh, so much happened this night that was probably more happened to me that night than any other location. And for me, that for me would probably be my most favorite location would be Ross Castle. Uh, 
and Katie Leeds. Yeah, it was, uh, to put personally myself, it is probably in the top three of most places. Like I've been to Ross Castle and Meath there as well, and it's in the top three, I would say, there. And just as you were saying it there, I remember Benita, we, we invested together after we went there. We got a, a sort of one of the team members and Ghost Era gave us a fee a voucher to stay two nights there. And we went up there, and uh, same as yourselves, wow. there we would. It was October, early October, it was quiet. Mm -hmm. uh, there was no holiday makers, and Benita came in. <laughs> same as yourself, then she says, You know, well, look, ha I'll see you later. It was like, What was she off to? <laughs> Yeah, you know, the, you know, you always have you got the kitchen, you got the bedrooms, the whole place. It was like, oh my god, and it was the atmosphere of it. Yeah, it's because it's like always misty because of the late then. Oh, it's, it's yeah, an amazing place. It is, and, and and I always wondered for years yeah. why she'd never stay. And I actually asked her one day, you know, have yeah. you ever experienced anything? She says, so she actually told me she was up in the the uh, the cave room, and she was the only one in the castle, and she heard her name being called. And it was the lady's voice, and she went, hmm, that's strange. She thought her daughter had came into the castle. So she went downstairs, and all the doors were locked, and then she said she got the goosebumps going up the back of her neck. So, yeah, so she possibly heard Sabina calling her name. So that's what she believed anyway. So that's a nice story. You know, so the, the, that's probably why she doesn't stay. <laughs> no. You know, I'd be the opposite. I'd be wanting to stay, but with, yes. with ben, no, she didn't want to stay. God, yeah. It does be eerie there, though. It's, it's fab, it's fab, like, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah it's, no, one them, it's one of them places, um, Annie, where you stay during the day. It's, mm. you know, it's yeah. amazing. It's beautiful. It's so relaxing. Cool, yeah. But when it gets dark at night, you know, you're, you're going to the toilet in purrs, and that's mm. the man going to the toilet in purrs, because without skirt, you know, but... <laughs> It's um, it is a fascinating place, and but probably now it's had a complete facelift mm. where you wouldn't recognize it. No, it has, yeah, it has had a complete facelift there. Um, yeah, no, no, Norma says, sure does, Auntie. I think that's about our bungalows anyway. <laughs> it can be all nervy as well. <laughs> the wife lets me alone here sometimes. Uh, Ross Castle is one of my favorite places too. It's amazing there, says Suzanne from back in time. I yeah, know, it is. that's it back in time and they did with there the week after we went. I think this was a couple of years ago. There we messed up the place. They you know. <laughs> uh yeah, but Green Love Castle, there's some amazing energy by the innate need, need to go back. Mm -hmm. Um so now we come to competition time there. So um well uh Gary, so you have got a pick of four things. So you've got to summon the spirit of Mary. Mara, sorry, Mara. And you've got a choice of four things to play. You can either fiddle with the harp, uh, ring the ringing ball, blow through the air horn, or beat on the drums. So you got a choice of four things there. Um, Emma, so you can, Emma, you got a choice of one of the four as well to pick out. So either type in harp, bowl, air horn, or drum. You can do that, Emma. Gary, which one do you want to pick to see if you can summon the spirit of Mara? I would say the bowl. The bowl, the bowl. Gary goes for the bowl. Yeah. And we'll just wait for Emma there. Emma's gone for the harp. Harp. Does come in cans as well. I was uh, going to say, because she's, <laughs> out, she's, she's actually out last night, and she's, I'm sure she's drinking plenty of harp. <laughs> so we'll see then coming to the end of the, the uh, end of the show there. Sorry, Norma and Alice, it was the first one in there. But we'll see anyway, whatever you pick there, harp and drum and or all the rest of them now. No one is blowing through their air horn yet, so we'll see about that <laughs> later. <laughs> uh, so we're going to talk about a sort of serious subject now, the last subject of the day, and it's going to be about um, incredulous paranormal. So it's about, if it was really sort of something for me and Gary to get our, uh, you know, get things off our chest there. Uh, so talking about credulous paranormal, so we're talking about where can people go for reliable contact content in relation to the paranormal so i'm just going to give a few examples where they go for tv newspapers radios magazines books conventions conferences websites social media platforms public or social other social events mm, good question um i would go for conference because um a lot of credible paranormal teams go to conferences um and also probably public events as well. People say, you know, oh, there's so many people here, it doesn't work. 
But you know what? We've actually got some of our best evidence by doing public events because sometimes when you go to a location where there's possibly a spirit lingering there and there's only five or six of us, maybe the might, spirit might not want to interact with one of us, but if there's a large audience that um, is controlled properly during an investigation, um, we don't like to call them public, even though they are public events, we like to treat our public events like real investigations. We take it very serious. Um, and we'll try to control it as best we can. I mean, we've done we've done people of 150 come to our events, and we've controlled it pretty well. Um, but and there's so many people there, the spirit might want to interact with one of them. I might not want to interact with one of us. And we've had skeptics go away, complete believers as well. Um, and enough for us. We're, we're not out to set out to do this, but we want people to experience what we do is for real, um, not only us, but other reputable teams out there as well. Um, unfortunately, Anthony, you know yourself with TV, uh, it's all to do with ratings. And if you're not getting new ratings, you're off the air. Um, so they have to, let's just say, make it as entertaining as possible. Yeah, as you, as you said, though, like TV got is got its kind of dying as in credibility there. Um, I suppose, as you say, like newspapers, magazines, uh, radio, you usually go have to go through. Where they could, there probably be more, more to do with what is actually happening at an event. They could be more. They have to go through somebody else, like a, a producer or an editor, to actually get yeah. whatever happened on the site there. But as you said, the public events. That's where you, somebody who's involved and in, not involved in the panel, can actually experience it themselves. Mm -hmm. you, said that, I mean, you said that then, it was, you know, it's... Well, I mean, we, uh, when we first started off, I think it was about a year into uh, what we were doing, when Ghost Searches Ireland team was formed, um, there was a TV producer who had watched one of our YouTube videos, and they had approached us um, from America, and they wanted us to get involved with this, this network. It was to do with um, something to do with the Disney Channel. Um, but it was to do with children, you know, and we thought, you know, yes, you know, it's like bringing a, a child of under 16 out with you. Mm -hmm. So we actually turned it down because we don't want to put the fear of God in children. We believe paranormal research, yes, you can enjoy it from a distance, you know, being young, but when you want to get out in the field and enjoy it for real, then you have to be an adult to do that, you know. So we didn't want to do We turned it down because of that. Oh, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah I can so. hear you perfect. You're not panting yeah, in the so. background, are you? That's not you, is it? <laughs> no, that's, that's that's my wee dog. Sorry about that. <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> you know, no, but you. yeah, so we, I mean, we didn't want to do it for entertainment purposes. We we wanted to do it for real. We've had a couple of other um, approaches as well where that said the similar thing, you know, you know, we'll, we'll want you to spice it up a wee bit. And uh, we just turned it down. We didn't. We don't. We don't do it for that. Hmm. And and like as we're talking about, I suppose the younger generation and how they're going to be influenced there. Like you know, where, where do you see yeah. how they would structure things like um, paranormal investigating in the future? What would they be relying their sources of evidence on? So I said again. So the dog just disturbed me. Just disrupted <laughs> me there. Sorry. So, so like the younger generation that are coming through, like say like our children, ourselves, like you know, where do you see them yeah. structuring, uh, uh, seeing where they're gathering their evidence, evidence from in the future, what type of equipment um, or way of method of investigating? Yeah, well, personally, I mean, there's there's nothing wrong with watching TV because I I, I don't know that we've all been there eating yourself, aren't we? Mm. We're probably we're most spotted or whatever comes on yeah. TV. Or, it's sort of it sort of opens your eyes to possibly what can be done out there. You know, when Most Haunted first came out, it was a show that nobody had ever seen before. And it was fascinating to watch with the historical side of things. And, you know, okay, the screaming part of it, the end with the vet and all screaming, that was, you know, we, I mean, okay, I, I've done it a few times. <laughs> I've screamed a few times, but um, yeah, but if children are watching that, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that, but the, the mm. best, that I can give for anybody out there when you become a certain age and you want to get out in the field go out and do it yourself and learn from what you pick up as well and if you want to you know if you want to learn more go to a reputable team that has a lot of people talking about them and who they are and you know like teams that do private cases um, 
probably would be best for them to go out in the field and to learn from them. That would be my best advice. That's an interesting thought now. I just thought that is it going to be dying out or dying out, dying out kind of for breed of investigator um, to investigate private cases where the families are feeling stuff if it's all to do with ratings and not actual practical thinking do you do you reckon the next generation has the capability of doing that I, I don't see why not you know i mean my 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 young daughter she she she's interested in it um and she's always been at me for the last few years when i bring her out no she was too young um, but just becoming an adult now, so maybe when she hits maybe 2021, 20, I'd consider bringing her out. Yeah, I would. Um, but it's if she wants to watch TV, that's fine. If you want to watch a horror movie, go ahead, enjoy the experience, enjoy the ride. You know, everybody wants to be scared. I do, you do, everyone wants to I get do. that fear back. You know, yeah. but um, I would, I would say the next group of people coming out in the years to come on, we're we're hung up our K two so whatever um will be more advanced in technology to what we have today hmm. and, and do you feel like um is there enough stuff happening afterwards like is uh, 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 people investigating now are they actually going back on stuff that they reviewed maybe a few years afterwards or is it that worthwhile yeah. or is it do you, do you agree on that 100 percent. yeah i mean i still i still go back and watch videos that we've done on YouTube um, on things that you forget and things, you know, my, my nurse, the, uh, we used to think called the vibration experiment. We were the first team, probably, well, one of the first, if not the first team to bring this technology out, um, you know, like the vibration bowl or the, the singing bowl. Yeah. Um, we used that technology through certain sounds, et cetera. Um, and we actually forgot about that. And then watching footage that we'd done four or five years ago, I'd say to the guys, you know, we should maybe consider bringing this back in again. So there's no harm in going back and looking what you've done in the past. Sometimes you forget things and sometimes you want to bring that forward and bring it back. I mean, there's Warren, for instance. Um, he's used to thousand rods. He's brought the thousand rods back in again. Mm -hmm. And people that know thousand rods, are, they're, they're, I, I find them fascinating. I really do. But if they can find water, why not find spirits, you know? Not, yeah. not, the, not, not the, the ones you find behind a bar, on the better way. But yeah, as you say, like thousand rods are one and probably the most things I when you go to uh, places, locations, and they kind of get the owners that are kind of skeptical or things. Yeah. Or, or people that I know that are kind of skeptical. They put more faith into thousand rods than you want mm -hmm. to do for anything and anything else, spiritual or whatever else. But it seems to yeah. be that there's some sort of reason for the thousand rods to actually be legitimate and, you know, mm -hmm. not totally 100%, but worth. Um, considering it as accurate um but yeah. do, you see, do you see like is the is there many is a good ability or naivety in the paranormal field is a lot do you see there's a lot of people that um that are on a wave on, on some maybe team or the team or some personality on the wave of that like i could actually so mention zach baggins for exact for example and they see that sort of investigated and they feel that that's the way they should investigate is yeah, I mean, that? yeah, I mean, when when Zach first started, I mean, um, when he first started, it was to do with ghost. It was called Ghost Adventures, but now it's more Demon Adventures, where um, he knows again. It's it's down to views, you know. It's down to people that watch. It's down to. Um, I'm not knocking at what he's done. He's been very successful, and good luck to him on that. But for me, um when you want to go down the site where you make a big few in figures by mentioning demons and he knows it works for him keep on because saying it to people more but oh, it's gone down a bit say it again i <laughs> would say, yeah I, I, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah yeah no I would, I would say you know when he started mentioning demons that's when the few and figures went up <laughs> yeah, say, um, yeah. <laughs> he was on the winner there you know but not every not everything in the paranormal research is to do with demons you know not a, I believe when you pass over that you don't become a demon. I think that you bring that personality over with you. So if you were, say, for instance, a bad person in life, um, you're going to bring that personality over with you into the spirit world. Whether you're a good person, you're going to bring a good person in the spirit world. So I believe there's good and there's bad, but not demons. That's uh, Everybody's different. That's just my personal opinion. Um, if people want to believe in demons, that's entirely up to them. But not for... 
I've got one or two more questions just on the subject there, but I'll come to everybody else's first there. Emma Louise Potter says, um, uh, my son is 18 and is very interested in the field and is always okay with the proper guidance. Yeah, uh, yep, and we've had the pleasure of bringing this young man out with us and fair play to him. He's very well. I mean, you, I mean, when I was 18, I would have missed a boat, but this young man, um, he's, a, he's, he's a future investigator and he definitely is, and he's very good at what he does. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I suppose yeah, it's learning from people above you there. And I, I suppose as well, it's learning from what happened in experiments years ago, like hundreds and hundreds of years ago, how many... Like, like I was talking to a lady, Anna there, B. Scott there, and she is interested in e e Egyptian kind of ways and methods, which goes into Freemasonry, and she mentioned the Knights Templar, but how it all mm -hmm. came over from Egypt, the ways of communicating with uh, spirits and all that. And I suppose that's other ways of trying to put into an investigation types of stuff like that. Alice says, when a place like the lake or a castle house is haunted, does the spirit stay around there for a long time? Again, it's entirely up to them as an indiv individuals. I mean, if I if I could go back to the house that I was brought up in and I had the, the power to stay and linger around there, why not? I would want to. So, yeah, it's a million-dollar question whether they do or not, and that's down to us as investigators to find out. So that's a very good question. Yeah. We'll have to find out there. Um, I don't know where I'd be there. <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably the bike fest, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the bike fest, yeah, that was good. Yeah. Uh, Derek says, uh, Derek from Ghost Air, just, Derek was out with me last night. Hey, guys, how are you? Oh, sorry for being late. My phone fell down the bog. Anyway, on to the next <laughs> one. <laughs> let's hope, okay. let's hope there was nothing in the bog when it fell down the toilet. Oh, sorry, hopefully, oh, hopefully there is. Maybe some money. That'd be great. Worth doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Buddy phones are always falling down there. Uh, but May says, <laughs> some teams, unfortunately, are only in for it for the entertainment value and make a uh, quick book. They don't have any ethics or respect for the spirit world. Yeah, I, I totally agree 100%. Um, I think that anybody that makes money from the spirit world, um, I mean, that's my per again, that's my personal opinion. Um, I mean, we've never done it. Um, so Sorry. it's down to that individual. But, you know, I if I was a psychic I medium... Um, and I, I was had this wonderful gift. I wouldn't charge a penny. I would I would want to go out and help people, you know, True, and take yeah. not take their, not take their money. True, yeah. I know. I know myself there. I do put a thing on my website there, like suggestible fee there, but because that's the price of everything coming on, I mean, going yeah. up. Say, like <clears> if I got a phone call from somebody in, I don't know, say up in County down there, like you know, I would listen to them and see if they would be willing to uh, feed for just for petrol or something definitely for petrol at the moment uh, i know that's just me but the other reason why i do it is to stop people taking a piss and wanting a free show as well that's the only other reason why it kind of happens there like so uh, yeah well I mean, the, what's killing it at the minute you know yourself only is um events teams there's a lot of events teams out there and yes it can be expensive we all we've all been there about traveling etc buying your own equipment but when you get events teams coming on asking people for money i think that's been a, just a wee bit disrespectful you know um especially now in this day and age it's hard to to rub 2d together with the price of everything going up etc you know i mean we, we we've done live investigations over the years never asked anybody for a penny um, we do it for what we want to do we do it because we love doing what we do but we also want the public to enjoy watching us for who we are not to take money of people true and if you're watching back on this there it's uh, 50 euro and uh, you have to pay by midnight there for your subscription yeah yeah yeah. The, the bank details <laughs> the bank details will scroll along the bottom <laughs> <laughs> <My job. laughs> yeah uh, Derek says, true, I agree, 100%. I think so, that's to do with collecting the phone from the toilet. Uh, <laughs> yeah, go for it, mate. Am I joking? <laughs> no one says, I'll probably need you to call my house, Anthony. We've had a few spooky incidents. Any time there, Norma, there. Um, travel expenses, of course. I know you live across the road. <laughs> <laughs> I'm messing. I'm messing. Obviously, <laughs> if it's local, yeah, definitely. I'm only there. It's only there, and I don't take any money from anyone. But not really anything there. Uh, 
only my wife if she lets me have anything of it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, it's uh, oh, she's smiling there, which is good there. Um, so I hope we haven't offended anyone there. And it's if you have any questions, uh, we'll feel free to do. We're going to close up the show now shortly there. So, but um, this is the competition's time. So um, Emma Woo-hoo! and Gary. Uh, so Gary first. We're going to reveal the correct answer first. So here it goes. So that was the right answer was the singing bowl. So I don't need to show anything else. So, <laughs> the singing bowl. so you're in the Halloween mega draw. Even the little doggy said, woohoo. <laughs> so you're in there, Gary. Well done there. Sorry now, Emma, there. The heart was incorrect there, unfortunately, there. I know she's angry. <laughs> but um, well done, Gary, in the Halloween mega draw there, you know. Yo, happy days. <laughs> well well done to you there. It was a singing bowl. Thank so you. Ringing, ringing your bowl does help there, you know. You know, <laughs> absolutely, yeah. yeah. Uh, Joanne says, um, uh, there we go. Joanne says, emotions play a big part in haunting's residual energy. I, I personally think negative emotions, sadness, war, spill and above provides more activity. What do you guys think? I totally agree 100%. Yeah, I think that a lot of locations that you're emotionally tied to um, would possibly have it. Yes, why not? What about you? Yeah, I suppose, yeah, it's, it's ne- yeah, a lot of it's negative energy would, yeah, it's, it seems to be just tragic events or murders or something like that or disasters <laughs> that seem to trigger off more happenings there. I suppose it's the sudden fate of something happening that was against the wish there, you know. Then again, like battlefields, ghosts have been seen and heard and, you know, hundreds of thousands of people. It's not necessary, I suppose, any of those people that were that died in that battle maybe it's just as you said residual energy or do we know it might be just the voices of those that died in that battle and not the ones that were that did die. i don't know anyway <laughs> someday uh, uh joanne says well done there emma says well done gary uh, thank you this is not this is not a fix by the way no it's not a fix there <laughs> Sam, uh, uh, i did get, get 100 euro from gary before the show though uh, yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, Justin, one last thing. Well, before I go to Gary, then how people can contact Gary and what's coming up in the future, we have an announcement to make. Well, I'm going to reveal where next year's convention is. The conference is going to be in. Drum roll. <laughs> New York, USA. No, I'm only joking. New Ross. <laughs> no, got mixed up New Ross. <laughs> County West Happy days. is the town it's going to be in. So if you want to book your places, book hotels for around about the Saturday, the 18th of February, 2023, feel free to do so. Tickets will be on sale around about mid-August to around September. Um, we'll have more from the speakers there. That includes Steve Parsons, um, also Carl Cooper, Dr. Carl Cooper, Dr. Julian Murphy, Dr. Eamon Ensborough, um, also Warren Coates and... Um, uh, Eleanor B. Scott and Ashley at Dartwood, and maybe a few more as well there. The stalls, and if you want to do any readings, feel free to contact us there as well. So a new Ross County Wexford next year. Um, uh, Derek says it'll be so good, can't wait. I think that's to do with yeah. the phone in the toilet still. <laughs> I don't know. Like, uh, Mary says also get the Mary's co, co, co doing it with me, so we share the blame and the you know if it all goes belly up <laughs> we, we, and actually Andy, i think this is the first paranormal convention that has been in Ireland for a few years as well yeah so that's pretty exciting it is exciting and i suppose with the way yeah. it is there as well everyone there i suppose it's cheaper for everyone to meet in one place there and 
I'm yeah. too lazy and skint to go anywhere to <laughs> see, see you all. Like we're all in the same boat. Yeah. So if everyone's, it'd be great just for one place there. Like, and it's great for making people make contacts because one of the team members in our team, Sinead, I met through a convention there uh, years ago there. And I met Gary as well at one years ago at Kennedy Castle there, a type of convention, kind of public event there. But it was yeah. a type of conference as well. There was speakers there as well, doing the readings yeah. as well and all that. And it's great for everyone to uh, come in and connect in as well there. Um, so, Gary, uh, before I say the last few shouts, uh, Joanne says, looking forward to this convention. I live in Gory, not too long to drive. You can pick me up, so then, Joanne. Uh, Derek says, funny, man. Uh, Alice says, uh, thank you. Uh, Anthony and Gary, look forward to the convention. It was great to see you there as well, Alice. Uh Derek was at one in, uh, with myself there 13 years ago, the one in the RDS there. In, no, sorry, in um, uh, Madison Blue there. Uh, Joanne says, thank you both. A great show there. Hey, uh, Gary, uh, where, what are you, where can people find Ghost Searches Ireland? Um, you can find us on our Facebook platforms. There's Ghost Searches Ireland, Haunted Ireland. There's a Ghost Searches Ireland, uh, just Ghost Searches Ireland on our Facebook. But there's also an open page, Ghost Searches Ireland Org. Um, and it's open for anyone that wants to check in on, on what we're up to. Um, also, we do our live, but we do a live investigation. Probably try to get one done at once, once every six to eight weeks as well. So you can find out everything that you need to know about us all on that. Also, yeah. So if there's any, if there's a YouTube channel as well. Yep, yeah, you can go to our YouTube channel. Just yeah, just type in Ghost Searches Ireland, and you'll see all our investigations that's been there over the last 12, 13 years. And, and it's great to have you, Gary. We'll be back talking to you again soon. It's great to have you on the show and you sound man. And I can't yeah. wait to see you again there. Um thank yeah. you everyone participating tonight there. Have a, hope you're having a happy Sunday there. Uh, Joanne says thank you both. Uh, uh great to, uh, Suzanne says thank you for a great show. No worries, thank uh, you. Suzanne, and heal well and get better and see you soon as well. Uh Emma Louise says really uh Enjoy the show. No worries, Emma. Come, tune in another day. We might be able to get you in the draw as well, though, Emma. Uh, just give me 100 euro and you won it. <laughs> uh, Mary says, great show. Uh, I was robbed. That. I was robbed. You told me 150 before we went on her. Yeah, I'm kind of. I did have 100. I was doing well. This is for Gary. <laughs> I got to pay Gary. <laughs> should have signed the contract. <laughs> Uh, that's it. Uh, uh, hurry up, guy. We need another live soon. It's, uh, be t it's been too long. True, we'll be tuned in yeah. there as well. And thank all you, all the best guys there. As says Sam, there. Love to everyone. Thank you for contributing. And slanger fall, Jimmy too. And see you again soon. Bye bye for now, folks. Bye bye bye. 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 -bye. <laughs>